Hey, what's up, everybody? So once in a while, I like to do a video that doesn't necessarily have much to do with Tarkov. In this case, it doesn't have anything to do with Tarkov. In this case, it's talking about gaming, but it's this little known up and coming game that almost no one has ever heard of called chess. Now, there have been some other videos that have been made on the thing that I'm going to discuss with you guys. But hey, this is my channel and uh, I want to talk about it. And I also think that it's interesting in the fact that um, there's been some new developments in this chess story that I think are very interesting that I think all of you will like a lot. Before I get into this, I want to explain to you guys that I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is like one of the most absurd, crazy, and shocking, genuinely shocking things that I have ever heard come out of any gaming-related community ever. This is potentially the biggest scandal that has been going on inside of chess ever and will call into question the ability for chess players to play the game proficiently, possibly forever. And it is so unbelievably crazy, and the allegations are so wild, but also as plausible as they are, makes this one of the most outlandish but likely things I think anyone could have possibly imagined. There is no script that is being written in Hollywood that could have come up with this scenario. Just so that you guys get an idea of what I'm talking about, it involves someone that apparently, based on statistical likelihood, is all but guaranteed to have been cheating his way through the ranks of chess by using remote-controlled anal beads vibrating in his rectum to tell him what moves to make while he's playing the game. It's that insane. Do I have your attention? Let's begin. The game of chess was invented somewhere around 600 AD, it is believed anyway, and the modern game of chess, through its many iterations, when it finally came to be the game that we are all accustomed to playing, was kind of finalized somewhere between 14 and 1500 AD. Since then, and through right up until now, no one has performed as well as this guy, Magnus Carlsen. He is the winningest chess player in history, clocking 125 wins in a row. A certified grandmaster, he is someone that just about every chess player aspires to become at this point in their lives. At one point in time, Carlsen was the World Chess, World Rapid Chess, and World Blitz Chess Champion, being the only person to have held all three of those titles at the same exact time, a feat that he repeated in 2019. Again, the only person to have done so. So it goes without saying that someone like Carlsen is really, really good at chess. The other guy in our story? This guy, Hans Niemann. Hans is 19 years old. He's a master, but not a grandmaster, someone that's up and coming. But he's also someone that, based on his ranking compared to someone like Carlson, is someone that Carlson should beat 99 times out of 100. Probably more than that. Probably 999 times out of 1,000. Probably more than that. Carlson is that much better of a chess player than Hans Nyman. But in September of 2022, just a few short weeks ago, Nyman did this. Wow. Yeah, Nyman beat Carlson. How did he beat him? No one really knows. Not even Nyman. I think he's just so demoralized because he's losing to such an idiot like me. You know, it's just, uh, it must be embarrassing for the world champion to lose to me. Yeah. So he refers to himself in a cheeky way that he's an idiot. But what else is odd is that immediately after the win, after Hans beat Magnus, this is what he had to say about it. Hans, yesterday was a terrible uh, day for you. And today you start out with a masterpiece. How would you summarize it? Chess speaks for itself. Is it something special doing this against Magnus Hans? Completely different personality type even. When he ended up doing that interview immediately after beating the winningest person in all of chess. Completely calm, cool, and collected and then just kind of walked away. As if he expected that he was going to win. Although he did look a little bit uncomfortable, don't you think? The interesting thing about a game like chess is statistically there are millions of different moves that you can make at almost any given time. There are tons of variations that you can make for even an opening sequence of, say, 20 moves. And there are times when, given the opportunity, you have the ability to be able to study the movements of any master, grandmaster that has played the game because typically all of these things get recorded. But in this particular match where Neiman defeated Carlsen, Neiman tried to defend his position in having beat him by saying that he memorized the first 20 moves of Magnus Carlsen's opener. Spending extra time to make sure that the transmission is correct because it's the world champion, and he's just sprung a very dangerous trap. Now, if I don't know this, it can be very dangerous. But the fact that it's not a miracle, it's actually me being extremely tedious and going through every single possible 
transposition or, or a sort of line that he, that he could play in the Catalan. So what he's saying is that he basically spent the time trying to learn and memorize every iteration that Magnus could have made or did make through the first 20 moves of their match together. Except that what he's describing in this situation is never a series of moves that Magnus had ever made before playing against Hans Nyman. He's never played the G3 Nimzo ever. Wait, whoa, wait a second. I mean, he's never played G3 and Hans is claiming that he, he Hans is claiming that he prepped it up to move 20 before. Now, this next part is the tinfoil hat conspiracy theory that everyone seems to be riffing on and was designed initially to be a meme, but it seems as though people are starting to grab onto it. Basically, the idea here is that Nyman is using anal beads, being controlled via remote, possibly by his coach or possibly by a supercomputer or a computing device to be able to read the board for the matches that he's having and give him the answers in terms of what it is that he should be doing to counter based on AI simulation. The beads vibrate, and according to those vibrations, he reacts accordingly based on whatever is vibrating, telling him whether or not he should move a certain piece in a certain direction at a certain time. And the entire anal bead conspiracy theory seemed to have caught fire when Elon Musk decided that he was going to tweet it and then subsequently ended up deleting the tweet. And while the idea of the anal bead conspiracy theory is outlandish and likely not the most plausible, the reality is, is that the belief that Nyman is cheating is very, very real, to the effect that chess.com banned him from being able to play on their site. Some recent events have made it really, really difficult for me to not stop speaking. After the game against Magnus, obviously Magnus uh, puts his tweet, clearly some insinuations, and then everyone starts to, to pile. I get uh, an email from chess.com saying that they've privately removed access to my chess.com account, and that they have uninvited me from the Global Chess Championship. Now. Now Hans fires back and says that he's not cheated since he's become an adult. However, in his teenage years, he did cheat in online chess a couple of times. He said the reasons why was most recently at 16, remember he's 19 years old, just a few short years ago, he cheated on online chess in order to get his ranking higher so that he could face better opponents, is how he put it. After this revelation, he swore up and down that he did not and has not been cheating in online games ever since then, having learned from his mistakes. However, Chess.com fired back and said that their ban will stand because they have more proof than what he is letting on to. Interesting. Now, there are people that have been split over this decision by Chess.com, saying that Carlson is just being a sore loser and that Nyman should be allowed to continue to be able to play, while others yet say that Nyman's a cheater and that Carlson should be believed given his winning history. Nyman, still swearing up and down that he was innocent, even went so far as to say that he would strip naked to prove that there was no device that he was using in order to cheat at chess while he's playing in front of another person. Calling Nyman's Bluff, the popular website StripChat, which is a cam site that has a monthly viewership of 400 million people, offered Nyman a million dollars to broadcast himself playing a live game of chess completely naked. The offer supported to help him prove that he did not cheat when he beat Magnus Carlsen, the world's top ranked chess player, in a tournament last week. Not that I necessarily want to see that, but the spectacle would be undeniable. And for the record, Nyman has not accepted that offer. The pair then reunited in an online chess tournament, where in move two, Carlsen resigned. I don't think he cheated in the Singfield Cup. But everything else oh, is still sorry, Alejandro. Sorry, Alejandro. I just have to interrupt you uh, because the game started um, and Magnus has logged off. What has happened? Carlson resigned at his second move, stating, I've withdrawn from the tournament. I've always enjoyed playing in the STL chess club and hope to be back in the future with this clip. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. Sounds kind of incriminating, don't you think? When pressed about what he meant, Carlson said that he would speak more at the end of the tournament, which he did. On September 26th, he wrote, I believe that cheating in chess is a big deal and an existential threat to the game. I also believe that chess organizers and all those who care about the sanctity of the game we love should seriously consider increasing security measures and methods of cheat detection over the board for over-the-board chess. When Nyman was invited last minute to the 2022 Cup, I strongly considered withdrawing prior to the event. I ultimately chose to play. I believe that Nyman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted. His over-the-board progress has been unusual, and throughout our game in the Siegfeld Cup, I had the impression that he wasn't tense or even fully concentrating on the game in critical positions while outplaying me as black in a way I think only a handful of players can do. This game contributed 
to changing my perspective. We must do something about cheating. And for my part going forward, I don't want to play against people that have cheated repeatedly in the past because I don't know what they are capable of doing in the future. That is a pretty scathing allegation. He's coming out straight on. He's coming out with a hard right cross and saying that Nyman is a cheater. Now, all the while, Nyman has denied vehemently that he is cheating in any way, shape, or form. But there is a bit of a smoking gun. A YouTuber by the name of Yosha Ekis went through and did a whole lot of math and started doing a check analysis on all of the games that Nyman has played professionally over the years. Basically checking the moves that Nyman made against an AI engine that was capable of, I guess, statistically evaluating what the best possible move would be in any given situation. Rating them on a score from 0 to 100%, with 100% being objectively perfect. Now, the best grandmasters in history would rarely get above, say, an 80% in any chess game. 80% being very, very high. Now, obviously, context is important here. If given an opportunity to, I guess, win a game in, say, four or five moves to get a checkmate, someone, anyone, everyone that plays chess a lot has had an opportunity to play a perfect game in that sense, because you can see four or five moves ahead let's say. But objectively, grandmasters versus grandmasters, you don't typically see that happen, ever. Maybe 80%, like I said. But like the tippy tippy top, the upper upper crust of all chess players throughout history, the guys that and girls that are the best of the best of the best, their perfect example games are going to be 75 to 90%, once in a blue moon. But Hans, based on the analysis provided by Yosha, Hans has rattled off more 90% plus perfect games than any other chess player in history in just the last three years. And he's also gotten a couple of 100% games in that same time period in top competition. So given that data, there are only two plausible explanations, a pair of statistical facts, if you will. The first being that Hans is cheating. The second possibility is he is the greatest chess player that has ever lived, ever walked this earth, ever played this game by an extremely, extremely wide margin. Not just by a little bit, by a lot. A Grand Canyon-esque chasm of ability that is yet to be seen by the human race. So could Hans potentially be the best chess player that has ever walked the earth in the history of man? No, it's not very plausible at all. Based on the post-match interviews that he has done and based on the analyses that he has provided of his gameplay in the past, there does not seem to be that level of exceptional brilliance for the game that you would expect to see out of somebody that is better than every grandmaster that has ever lived. I believe the Twitter account of Ari Paul would put this best. If you played Powerball or poker or chess, every day for the life of the universe to date, about 14 billion years, and then repeated that for another 14 billion years, and then again for another 14 billion years, still less than one in a billion that you'd get any of these wins. You are more likely to win the Powerball jackpot seven times in a row than you would be to have clocked in the number of wins, especially perfect play wins, that Nyman has been showing the world over the last three years. Can we prove guaranteed beyond a shadow of a doubt that Hans Nyman is a cheater? No, but we could say that over the last three years, it would be more statistically likely that the universe would have experienced heat death than having clocked as many wins and as good of a level of gameplay that Hans Nyman has displayed in that same time period. Thanks so much for coming and checking this out, everyone. It was kind of fun making this. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Please give me a follow on my socials at OnePegMG on Twitter, at OnePeg on TikTok. Please give me a sub here if you would be so kind. And if you would, come check me out on Twitch.tv slash OnePeg, where I am live every day between 6 and 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.